There is nothing wrong, nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. Well, we made it, safe and sound. We did, we're here. Another show. You, uh, you look like you made it all right. I did, fortunately I did. You know, we appreciate everybody sticking with us. Uh, we're a week late, of course. Uh, you guys can call Hurricane Ian, tell him thank you. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, we do have a lot of friends and family that uh, had a rough go with Hurricane Ian. So, um, you know, for those that are unable to watch it, tonight because they're out there, you know, in the process of uh, being brave and, and rebuilding and, you know, all the current people that are out there on the front lines. We thank you for uh, doing that. We have some friends of the family here at Mudhole uh, that were affected. Um, you know, everybody is safe, but, uh, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a rough go. Yeah, absolutely. That's the main thing is, you know, obviously there were some lives lost and um, that's very unfortunate, but, you know, luckily our family at Mudhole, um, We've reached out to you know several people in the Fort Myers area, yep. you know, uh, Tampa area, and uh, they are safe, so that is good. Um, you know, but uh, a lot of rebuilding to do, a lot of work that, uh, to be done down there. But fortunately, everyone we know is safe. So for sure. Um, all right, so we are now for episode 91, Turks Head Knots. So this is something that it's decorative, but it's also functional. Uh, you have a bit of a, are you going to go through your history lesson for we'll, us? We'll get into history <laughs> lesson soon. Yes. Um, but yeah, yeah, the, so the Turk said not, while like you, like you said, it is mostly decorative. Um, it does, in some cases, it has some practical uses. Yeah. And we'll get into those in a little bit of history too. But, um, you know, the, the cool thing about this Turk said deal is it only requires a couple of things to actually get started with it. You know, yes. we got the, uh, the tool. Obviously, there's a tool that we'll show in a little bit, right? Yep. Um, you need some kind of cord, um, and really besides those two things, there's a couple little, you know, maybe a burnishing tool or a, uh, a pick, you know, would help, but right. uh, really easy, a couple tools to get into it, so that's the great part. Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's not uh, cost prohibitive by any stretch. I would venture to say that you are going to need a little bit of patience for this one. It's not that it's necessarily hard, uh, but you do have steps you need to follow, and you got to go, you know, down the line. We do have a roadmap for you. We're going to go over. I'm going to go to the, to the whiteboard tonight, show you the roadmap, uh, show you everything you need, and uh, that's pretty much going to be the show. So we wanted to take time. I, I know it's a little more specific than just some general rod building stuff, but I do think that, you know, it is a usable tool that people will be able to incorporate into a rod build a gaff build, um, you know, things like that. So, um, before we go any farther, though, you've got some new things that we want yeah, to talk about we really do. briefly. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, a couple new releases um, to our, you know, our uh, product lineup here. We do have some new blanks to introduce uh, from Cash and Rods, or out of North Carolina. Actually, got one over there next to you, Chris. Um, so, we brought in twenty. 23, 24 models okay. of these cash and blanks. Uh, the cool thing about these is they are made in America. Um, all the materials, everything start to finish the process yeah. is done in America, um, in North Carolina. Right. Um, so, or at least they're hand rolled in, in North Carolina. Uh, again, 23 models, you got mag bass, you got flipping, a couple swim bait models, a couple all purpose models. Okay. Um, and some of those can even carry over not only freshwater but also inshore. Make a couple, you know, some popping models in there that make great inshore uh, blanks. Absolutely. So, um, affordable price. These are anywhere from I want to say around 110, 115, upwards of 140, 130, somewhere in that range. All right. So great price for an American-made blank. Absolutely. Um, you know, there's not a lot of vendors or a lot of companies out there that can tout that American-made for a blank right now. So of course. Kudos to them, but. 
uh, some great blanks to check out uh, as a new product. Yeah. So let's uh, while we've got this, and of course yeah, we've yeah. got the bench cam. Are you gonna show the finish? Yeah, let's show the finish here real quick because that's kind of a unique part. Um, let's make sure that we get this bad boy focused here. Hang on. Stand by. We're gonna try to get it. Just want you guys to be able to see this. There it is. Whoa. There you go. All right. That's good. So Hunter, give them a little history on that one. Yeah, so you know, I'm not gonna go too detailed on this, and you guys can obviously, you know, check out um Cashin's website. Um they have a tab, um, a blanks tab on their website that'll kind of go into detail about all their processes and materials. But anyway. So this, this finish, we basically call this unsanded. It has a rib type of finish. Probably can't hear that necessarily, but um, it does have a raised finish to where this blank is not sanded down uh, smoothly. So again, Cashin can explain that a little bit better than I can, you know, via their website, or even I know we have some of those bullet points on our website. Uh, there is reasons behind doing this, um, you know, and you will also see this on other, you know, rods across the spectrum, but um, yeah, that's uh, one unique thing about their blanks is they do leave them unsanded. Cool. All right. Well, you know, we had the bench cam out tonight, so yeah. I had to, I had to kind of, you know, make sure that everybody knows that that's how those blanks come, uh, right. that it's not, you know, an error, it's not mm -hmm. any, anything like that. That is done on purpose uh, from the good people up at Cash In. Yep. So. And we also have some new CFX <clears throat> grips. Um, specifically, we do have um, some brand new shapes. We also have um, some existing shapes in a new finish. Uh, this finish is called the Ultra Touch. Um, and to kind of give you an idea of, of what this feels and looks like, um, I'm actually going to move this over to the document camera here too, Phil, if you want to get that set up. So essentially what I have here is, if you guys are familiar with CFX, um, they do have a slightly raised kind of, not really a bumpy, uh, a, it's just a texture, I guess you could say, right? Uh -huh. With these new Ultra Touch grips, yeah, sorry, can you? No, 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 you're good. I'm just trying you? to, there we go. So the two Ultra Touch grips. Just don't move up and down okay. from there. Is that good? Yeah. Right, there we go, right mm -hmm. there. So these two grips in, on the left side of your camera there, that's the new Ultra Touch, and you can see the difference here between these two two grips here. Sorry, I had to move, but so now I switched these. Sorry, but <laughs> in my right hand is the Ultra Touch, and there's hardly there's a little bit of texture there, but just not much. Um, and then my left hand is the standard CFX finish that you guys are used to. These Ultra Touch grips are very, they're, they're, I wouldn't say very smooth, but they do have a smoother finish compared to the existing uh, finish that they use. So these I believe are coated, um, they're either coated or they use a, a two, two coats of epoxy, I believe. It is, it's a, it's a, it's a two layer process. Two layer process, instead, right. Instead of just a one. Yeah, so that really gets that, that you know, that rough, not rougher finish, I'm using the wrong adjectives here, but um, it smooths it out and it just gives you a better feel in your hand. Um, and the benefit too is you still, you, you keep that, you know, uh, that grip feel, you know, that yeah. grippy feel. It doesn't get uh, that, almost like the tacky feel, you know? Yeah. It's not, uh, when it gets wet, it's not slick. You don't yeah. have anything, any problems with that, so. It has a little bit of like a velvet kind yeah. of a touch, yeah. you know? Yep, yep. So if you uh, haven't checked out these grips, definitely do. Like I said, we have the new Ultra Touch is available in uh, probably half a dozen to maybe eight of our existing most popular CFX shapes. Right. We also have uh, about six of the, um, of the brand new shapes okay. that are in the uh, former or uh, the, the existing finish that we have, so. Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. Um, there are a couple questions here. I just, wanna, I just wanna touch here really quick. Uh, this one here. Uh, Mark Beers, can you put finish on the CFX? You absolutely can. Yeah. Uh, you can put it on either one, um, but you're gonna use the rod finish that you prefer, apply it over the top of the CFX grip while it's spinning as you put finish on the whole rest of the rod, uh, or before or after, or it doesn't matter, but you apply finish to the CFX uh, grip just like you would 
um, your thread finish. Right. So, and you can do it in multiple layers. That will kind of help control, you know, um, like you were saying earlier, I don't know the proper, you know, exact term, but the more epoxy you put on it, the less texture you're going to feel. So if you coat it with one thin coat of finish, you're going to have a little bit less texture than if you leave it the way it is there. But as you put more, you know, you're going to have less texture. So depending on what you want, you can, you know, kind of gauge how much finish you put on it with how much, um, you know, texture it is. So, um, yeah, Sean's exactly right. It, it does. It sort of feels like a velvety rubber, uh, the best description I can come up with. You know, some people really like the velvety feel. Um, I think if it was socially acceptable, some people would <laughs> drape themselves in velvet. So, yes, there's a, there's a little bit of a TV history there with that. Um, all right. So, we do have some prizes tonight because we know you guys don't just come to look at our ugly mugs. So, we've got a couple prizes. Um, the first one tonight, we're going to give away some butt cord, which is this here. So, this is a 100 foot of butt cord. It comes in a number of different colors. Do you remember how many? 100? 8 to 10. All right, cool. That's it. That seems safe. Yeah. Uh, it's a 16th inch, 110 braking strength, 100 foot of it. Uh, this is teal. I've also got white, uh, really just because they contrast uh, well together. And uh, the dolphins are doing pretty well, so I figured I would you know, sure. do, do that. Um, so second place, we're going to do a little butt cord. Uh, Turks head knot tying jig. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the first giveaway will also be this guy. This is the Turks head jig. So this is what we're going to be using tonight, OK? Looks uh, a little bit like a, I don't know like a mine that you would see floating in the ocean in World War II or a, some kind of a space capsule, maybe. But it's a Turk's Head jig. We're going to be giving one of these away with every giveaway. We're going to be doing some butt cord. And then uh, for second place, we're going to do a frog gig kit. So we haven't brought the frog gig out in a while. So we figured we'd give one of those away. And then uh, for the grand prize tonight, we're going to do the cord, the jig, and we're going to do a gaff kit. So that's, uh, that's a big one there. That's going to be that's going to cool. be a good one. So, um, everybody, all the offshore, you know, like the uh, like the gaff kits. So, all right. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, here here we go. Let's go. You're going to pull that banner down there because I need to put up uh, the first one I saw. Um, can you make a note of this? Uh, Austin Beardsley uh, got my velvet reference. So not that I was necessarily going to give away a gift card, but Austin, you're the first one I saw that mentioned George Costanza and Seinfeld and Velvet. So we need to put a note so I can give you a gift card. Um, and speaking of that, if you win a prize tonight, live at mudhole.com is the email address. So Austin, send an email to live at mudhole.com. That's how I'm going to know that you won the gift card. And to all the winners later tonight, make sure live at mudhole.com, or if you just want to say a great thing or a bad thing about the show. I get that email, so fire away. All right. Um, let's get this thing going. And Yeah, a couple more quick little things. We oh, do yeah. have a, uh, a rod building class this weekend in San Diego. So if you are signed up for that, um, should be a great weekend. We have several instructors going. Todd, Buzz, Cindy, a um, couple more mixed in there. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I believe, will be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, if you are uh, going to be in that class, definitely enjoy. You guys will have a great time. Uh, and be on the lookout. We are putting up um, each week, I feel like Todd is putting up more and more classes on the website. Yes. Uh, they are back in the routine of now doing travel classes, not only in Oviedo, obviously, but San Diego and other uh, you know, popular cities across the U.S. So check those out. Um, because we do have a 101 class, but we have some very specific classes as yes, well. Yes, we do. Absolutely. Yep, yep. We just, um, I think I just finished up the fly class. Was it fly or surf? I think it was, it was one of the two uh, a few weekends ago. Uh, so fly. It fly. was fly? Cool. Um, yeah, that's also a thing, too. That's, we don't have only the 101 classes. We also have uh, more specific fly, surf, yes. um, et cetera, classes to choose from. So. Cool. And you're going to tell them about the photo contest? Yes. Because so, we have started voting. The photo contest finalists are in. And this is for the metallic builds. Yes. So 
Let's, uh, I think we got a little cutaway we need to run there, so let's check that out. Go ahead, Uncle Phil, run. All right, so congratulations to those finalists. A uh, lot of good ones in there. And of course, if you are a member of the Mudhole Live Rod Builders Workshop, there is a poll. And you, as the members, get to choose who wins in terms of first place, second place, and third. Those winners will receive a $250 gift card, a $150 gift card, and a $100 gift card to Mudhole. And speaking of the uh, Rod Builders Workshop, we are like a handful, and I mean a small handful away from 25,000 members. So call the kids, mom, wife, uncle, cousin, everybody. Tell them to join because by the time we get to 25,000, which will be very soon, we're going to do a random drawing for 25,000 mud bucks to be redeemed on the website which we were checking the other day, and quite a few people actually uh, have been taking advantage of the mud bucks, and it's, it's a pretty cool little deal. So uh, you don't have to do anything special except shop, and you're going to earn them. And then, of course, you can redeem them at any time uh, on the website. So um, if you're not a part of the Mud Hole Live Rod Builders Workshop, it might be worth it. might just be worth it. Yeah, and even if you are, you know, invite some of your friends, your family, whoever, because the faster we get to 25,000 members, yeah. the quicker we can do this giveaway. Because that's all you have to do. You just yeah. have to be a member. You don't have that's to do it. anything special beyond that. All right. Now that all that's out of the way, let's talk about this Turk's head knot. Well, where did this come from? Was this from the, uh, the ancient Turconian? You know, I uh, really uh, dug into the books today. <laughs> did, did you? Oh, yeah. Did you find the library, the, uh, yeah, the, the extensive know, mud hole library? A couple uh, Google searches, and, yes. you know, I found it. The no, hallowed so, halls of, yes. In all seriousness, uh, from what I could find, you know, this, this knot dates back thousands of years. Okay. They really don't even know the origin. It goes back that far. Sounds like it. All right. Um, so, obviously, it's, it's a very popular knot for, uh, you know, Maritime sailors, very popular on boats. Right. Still to this day, you'll see this a lot. Um, you know, we see them a lot down here on flats boats. Guys will wrap their steering wheel, steering wheel with the yeah. cord, and uh -huh. then they'll sometimes finish off. Yeah, uh, they'll terminate the ends. With yeah, that. yeah, with with two or three of these knots. So, okay. Um, not only, no pun intended, are uh -huh. they uh, you know practical. You sure. know, um, they you know they obviously look very cool. They're pretty. You can looking. integrate different colors. You know, this one is kind of toned down, a little muted. This is actually uh, one of the guys uh, down in our assembly department, Mike. He uh, let us loan this one for tonight. This one custom painted by Don Schaefer. Very cool design. Also, we got a couple Turks heads built in here. So, yeah. anyway, he's got the, you know, black and gray, which looks really sharp. We'll show you a little bit later. We're going to dive into some teal and white. You know, you can really contrast some colors and make it pop. Absolutely. You um, can make it as attractive or as ugly as you want. Yeah. But anyway going back to the history a little bit. Um, it kind of all started with, you know, a lot of people use these on, you know, hand tools like swords, uh, you know, axes. Would you, would you call a sword a hand tool? Uh, I mean, in, you know, in, in probably 500 uh, BC, I'm sure it was okay. a hand tool. Sure. Um, right. But anyway, that's kind of where it started. Yeah, I think then, nowadays they're putting them on like flashlights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, kayak paddles. Yeah, you know? for sure. Uh, it, honestly, the it can go on anything you want it to, and whether no it's doubt. it's it actually has a use like this one, you know, this gaff, uh -huh. you can obviously, it's made to hold it there. Uh -huh. You nice got the grippy. knots on both sides. Okay. Um, so it is practical, but you know, you can also just use it as a decorative item too. It no doesn't doubt. have to have a use. Yeah. Um, you could yeah. probably put it on a tumbler or something if, if you wanted to. You know. Sure. But yeah, that's kind of the backstory, just real quick. I'm sure there's a couple people out there that could uh, school us on some oh, Turks got, head knowledge. I got no yeah. doubt with but, this with this group. 
But yeah, they are pretty cool. And obviously, like we said, you know, only you only need a couple tools, which we're going to dive into in a minute. But um, yeah, there's a little, you know, again, decorative. It can be practical if you want it to be. But um, uh -huh. yeah, there you go. The uh, the peanut gallery got gotcha. you. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, we were we said it was uh, not the best joke, Hunter. Uh, yeah. So I think mine was better than that. <laughs> Here it is. All right, we're, uh, we're 21 minutes in and we're already getting it. So, all right, let's walk through how we do this, okay? Um, do we want to do a giveaway before we, before we do that? What are we doing? Um, he already explained why we did yeah, it. Let's do all it. right, let's, let's do it. So we are going to give away some butt cord. Um, let's do two colors. Okay. We'll give away two colors. We will do our best to um, you know, handle your color requests, okay? Um, I'm not sure what the stock is on all colors. I think trust we have me, all in stock I right will now. do my very best as I try to for those winners. I think, you know, we've been behind the scenes a little bit. Lots of wonderful people have won some stuff, so we try to accommodate the best we can. So with that being said, let's go ahead and draw somebody and then we're gonna dive into this. So, Two rolls of butt cord and a Turk's head knot jig right here. So run that bad boy. Let's see if we can get somebody we can pronounce. All right. How about that? Raymond Moreno. Moreno? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Coming out of YouTube. Nice. Congrats, Fantastic. Raymond. Raymond, congratulations. And as I mentioned earlier, you're going to send an email over to live at mudhole.com and uh, We'll get, uh, we'll get that order over to you. And just let me know, you know, have a look at the website later. Don't do it now, because you want to stick around, see how this is. Um, we'll have a look at colors and uh, see what we can get out to you. All right? Okay, so now to the demo. We have two colors of butt cord. Yes, you can use paracord. Um, some other people have mentioned, you know, different sizes, different style ropes. You're probably going to want to tailor the thickness of the rope or the material based on how big of an item you're going to be using. Now, again, we're using this Turk's Head jig. This is not the only one in existence. Um, you can also tie them on your hand, not necessarily an eight bite Turk's head, uh, but you can tie some smaller ones by hand. Um, so just bear with us a little bit. I'm not giving you the end all be all. You have to use this jig. You have to use this butt cord. This is an introductory to this. I know sometimes there are some hard stops that like, hey, you really should use this. Hey, you really shouldn't do that. This is getting everybody going into Turk's Head Knot. You can explore uh, as you see fit, but this is a 101, so here we go. Turk's Head Knot Jig, butt cord. I like to have a burnishing tool. This is the handy dandy uh, burnishing tool that everybody has known to use when you're getting stuff from us. And inside the package, I've got one here, so how it comes, it comes with the barrel is empty, okay? So here it is with all the little pegs on it. And then in this hand, obviously, there's no pegs on it. So they're little tiny threaded pegs, right? And that's what's going to create the bites in the rope, okay? So a bite is a bend of a rope, okay, that does not cross itself. So this is a bite, all right? Hopefully, maybe I should use the white. Stand by. I get this blue shirt going on. It's like being in front of a green screen. Okay, this is a bite, all right? So this bite is going to be created by those pegs, just like that, okay? So when we talk about an eight-bite Turk's head, that is because there are eight pegs around the top and eight pegs around the bottom. Now, there is another term in Turk's Head you will see. It's called a lead. So a bite is obviously this. So it'll be an eight bite like that. 
the leads are the number of strands that are from top to bottom of this Turk's head. And let me show you what I'm talking about there. So this is after one pass on the Turk's head jig, okay? Again, sorry, I should have done it in, uh, you want me to hold it out here? Should have done this one in white, but here we go. So real quick, we're going to talk about leads, all right? Leads are, if you were to take this Turk's head, this is one pass on the jig all the way around. See, it's kind of like a never-ending circular thing. You know, like you put the coin in, go around, all good things, right? So if you were to cut this from top to bottom, you're then going to be left with how many pieces of um, the butt cord that are running through here. So if you cut it like that, and then you measured the ends, so like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that, right? You were counting from top to bottom, bottom to top. That's going to give you your lead number. To be honest with you, it's not ultra important. But if you want to call it what it is, with it being an eight byte, seven lead Turk's head, or you can have a four byte, six lead, you know, that is what when you see or you, you look up like a Turk's head map, your leads are going to be how tall this thing is. And sometimes you've seen these Turk's head knots be like the whole length of a, you know, a gaff, not just this short. This is what you get with this jig, right? Again, Turk said 101, right? So eight bytes, all these bins are bytes, and then the leads are top to bottom. All right, cool. Just wanted to get that out of the way. And what else in the package? We have a little card. This is going to give you a little map. It's a little road map. That's what that is, all right? And we have a one that's blown up because that's hard to read. And then you have kind of a needle tool. So this is a needle tool, okay? It's got a little slant on it, and it's got a hole in it, okay? Got a hole in it. It's like a little nose cut to it, right? So to that, you can actually take and put the threading into the bottom part of it and use it to go under or over thread. Uh, I'm sorry, butt cord, all right, or paracord. That's really all we're doing. We're following a roadmap. Uh, for those that joined us for the Weave Show, if you made it all the way through that one, um, it's like a left list, but it's not. <laughs> so anyway. Um, you might have mentioned it, not sure. If anyone is wondering, that's 1 16th yeah. um, diameter. 16th diameter butt cord. Uh, and of course, like, like I had mentioned, you know, depending on what object you're putting it on, how many threads or cord pieces are in there, you're going to have to play with that a little bit. You know, like if you were to do a Turk's head knot on a pencil, you probably couldn't use half inch cord, right? You got to probably get way, way down. But if you wanted to put something, you know, around something like a beach ball size, you can yeah. get a little bit larger. It's just you couldn't use this guy. Right. But in a sense, it's the same. We're just going to show you how to uh, work this. Now, Brian, and this, I love Brian. He's always a step ahead of me. I appreciate it. Brian, uh, a FID. FID. We're using either the burnishing tool or this, what I called a needle earlier, to help walk through it. In maritime knot making, this is a fid. You're exactly right. Thank you, Brian. Hopefully everything is well out in your neck of the woods. Um, so yeah, sometimes you see them, they're really, really cool looking, like polished stainless steel or something, and a lot of the times then they'll have a little decorative knot on the end of the fid, and it, it looks pretty cool. They'll use it to tighten the knot. They'll use it to work the thread or, gosh, you know, <laughs> uh, you might be a rod builder if you just repeatedly call this thread. So uh, if you guys are uh, partaking tonight in uh, adult beverages, for every time I t say thread, you have to take a shot. Anyway, so um, using the FID, that's how you would work this through. All right, let's go over the roadmap and 
Here is, this is, again, this is the first pass. This is the jig, all right? So to put this three-dimensional object into a two-dimensional map, we're going to go over the whiteboard. <clears throat> I'm going to go on this side. All right. And if you notice, the excellent graphics team, um, Matt Hoffma and the guys downstairs, Ethan and printing, they have saved you from my horrific handwriting. Okay? Again, mom said I should have been a doctor just based on the handwriting, and here I am, building fishing rods. Anyway, so one, four, eight, all of these numbers are going to be these numbered pegs, okay? As you go around this jig, one and one, they're lined up. They're not offset. So one is above one, and it goes all the way around. One to eight on the top, and one to eight on the bottom. This arrow is your butt cord, not thread. So you're going to start at peg one, carry down to peg four. So you're going to go down and sort of around this cylinder. You might have seen a Turk's head jig that's actually flat on a board. Sometimes people will make them on their own and they're flat on a board. You can then flex it and make it into a circle, but for this one, you got it right here. So this is what we're using. So you go one, four, eight, three. You're going to start seeing O, U, O, U, O all through here. Right? Because as you go through and you're creating these passes, you're going to intersect butt cord at some point. Okay? So your first intersection is going to be between 3 and 7. You're going to go over that intersection, the O for over. Right? Going to go make your bite around 7. You're going to come to 2. Up. Oh, we're intersecting again. We're going to go over. If you notice and you look all through here, your first intersection is always over. So this one is just one, so it's over. Another single intersection, over. Now we're going to create two intersections here between two and six, and I'm going to show you. You go over, under, okay? And then you just, when you get all the way to the end, your last pass from five to one is over, under, over, under, over, under. And then, hey, you're done for the first pass. So let's show you on the document camera. All right, are we losing anybody yet? No, no, not yet. No, not not quite. I like, huh? uh, I like John's comment there. If you want to highlight that one. Oh yeah. Yeah. He said he, he took his first shot. Hope you uh, hope you say thread a lot more because he's awfully thirsty. That's what I'm talking about. That's a true rod builder. <laughs> that is a true rod builder. All right. Um, Let me screw this over. Just a, uh yeah sure. And that way I'm not in your bubble. Good. All right. We got, what, six foot of bench, we might as well use it, yeah. right? All right, um, what I have found to get this one pass and some tags here is about five feet of cord. That is not scientific. That is just about that. That's about a little bit of, you know, one of the sections of leader that I tie for a fly rod. Um, six feet would be about my whole wingspan, so we're just gonna do about five. All right, I like to burn the ends of this here. It just kind of helps keep everything together a little bit better because this thing can get haywire anyway. So, all right, there are, <laughs> so maybe try to, stand by, whoop, all right. Okay, so as I mentioned, one, two, all the way around. Um, so what I do is I'm going to actually start here, and this is kind of like my tag end, right? Those tag ends that are hanging out below this. So there's a tag, right? Following our map. Are we going to get a little, uh, we get a little picture-in-picture picture in this bad boy? 
Go to the chart. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, I got my nails done before this, right? Don't worry, it's not frozen. Phil just has to click it a few more times. All right, we're going to start. There we go. All right, so we've got one. There's your bite on one. We're going to go to four, so we're going to rotate, come to four. Okay, there's your bite on four. We're going to go to eight, so we're going to rotate, we're going to go to eight. We're going to come down to three. All right. Now we're going to go from three to seven. There's our first intersection. Okay. Thankfully, we're going over, so that's no big deal. We're going to go from three to seven. Coming around here to seven. Up, oh, we got another intersection. Seven to two, we're going over. Because remember, this is the first intersection. Sorry, I'm trying to stay in the center here. All right. Seven, now to two, there's an over. So we're going to rotate this thing around. There's two. First intersection, over. Up, oh, now we've reached the second intersection on this pass. This has got to go under. I'm just going to lift it up a little bit and slide it under. I'm not using the FID just because I'm kind of moving along here, right? So then you're going to pull it through. All right? Now, when you're making these passes and you're creating these bites, you do not need to cinch this thing down because you're going to have to work it up a little, down a little, over a little, and that's where either your thread burnishing tool or this supplied FID is going to come in, right? So from two, we're going to six. We went over, under, we come around here to six. Create your bite, there's your over, here's your under, right? And you can see there is a little bit of a pattern developing, right? And you'll get to the point where you don't even really need to look at what you're doing on the roadmap. Because now you're going to go from 6 down over here to 1. And if you notice, you're constantly moving to the bite, to the peg that's to this side. It's an open peg, the first open peg from this previous bite, right? So you're going to go there, and you'll go over, under. Let me tighten that up. Over, under. Third intersection is over, right? And you can kind of see this thing starting to come together, OK? That's how you work through it. Now, as you make all your passes, you will then, through the magic of Martha Stewart's kitchen, you will then be left with this, okay? So here's your first pass. Now to get this off of the jig, you actually take and back these screws out. I just have them hand tightened in, right? These come right out. All right? So now we're going to be left with this. For me, personally, well, I was taking that off, but yeah, sorry. All right, so I'm going to leave that there real quick. I take the first pass off of the jig when I make my second and third pass, and I'm going to show you why. Now, real quick, come off of the document camera uh, because I wanted to mention. When you get your jig, okay, it's going to come with these little tiny screws that have, they have a little Allen key head in it. Don't ask me how I know, but <clears throat> you can also use a regular metric screw, okay? This is an M3. It's probably because I lost one or two of these little tiny screws and I had to go to Ace Hardware. And when I did that, I just took the jig with me and walked up and down the aisle until I found something that matched. So that's an M3. I think I bought an M316 or an M320, I believe. Um, 
So there you go. Jot that down if you get one of these, because you'll probably lose one. And that was a question, too. It was up a little bit. But um, there was some questions. How do you, you know, get those little pins onto the jig? They yeah. just screw on there. They or, do. Or, sc or screw in, screw on, whatever you want to say. But yes. Very simple. Absolutely. So sorry I didn't cover that before. But yeah, those, they just come loose in the bag. And then you just, I just hand tighten them. And honestly, I'm going to show you here on the document camera. This is the inside of this thing. So these will tighten, right? You can tighten them. You can see them, they go through, right? Depending on, I just literally tighten it so that it just is the depth of the, the kind of side wall there. And then that's it. Once we're done here, I'm gonna back all these out, take them all out, try not to lose them in the carpet, put them back in the bag where they're safe, and then now we're gonna be left with this, okay? This is your first pass, all right? So let's talk about, uh, you want to give something away? <clears throat> let's do it. So let's do it. <clears throat> giveaway two, we're going to be doing uh, two, more <coughs> spools, <clears throat> two more spools of butt cord. Yes. Uh, we're going to do a jig as well. And then we're also going to throw in uh, the frog gig kit. It's a great prize. Sounds like a good old so, gig in time. Well, let's, uh, that's <clears throat> second place for tonight. Let's cue that one up and let's get a lucky winner. Who we got? Who we got? Good questions coming in. Too. Remember, if Mudhole or Sean Cheney win, we have to give a gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's already happened once. All right, Bassman. Ooh, Bassman. Bassman coming out of YouTube. Nice. Congratulations. Love oh, the name. Oh, man. <clears throat> I could put in another Seinfeld reference there, but I think I'm going to hold, I'm gonna hold off on that one. Hold off on that one. I can't do two in one night. All right. Um, perfect. Do we have any, any quick questions quick that we need to address? Because um, there's some. I see 27 star questions. So, a couple just real quick. <clears throat> How would you incorporate different colors in the Turk's head? Which I think you're about to show Getting that. Getting ready to do that. Okay. Stand um, by. Chase says he's digging this thing. He could put them on everything. That's it. Love it. It's like a hot sauce. I'll <laughs> put that Turk's head on everything. Um, it says if you do two colors, this is from Taylor. Okay. Uh, do you wrap it around the tool one at a time or sim simultaneously? Uh, I think you're I, about yeah. to cover that. I like to do it one at a time. Uh, you, phew, I'm sure you could do it simultaneously. I, I, I know you could, but just for me, I'm, yeah. I'm going to show you how to do it. Yeah. Lots of questions on um, how do you do sec, uh, second colors, yep. multicolor. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get right to let's it. Let's get into it. Mm -hmm. All right, so I pull out the same amount of white that I have for the teal. Now. There is not necessarily a right or wrong way to go in and or out of this, okay? So, looking at... Real quick. Yes. So, I don't think we mentioned, we mentioned this earlier, but not right now. You unscrewed all the screws and just pulled this right off the jig, correct? Correct, okay. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Let me... So yes, this just slid right off the jig. And of course, if you wanted to keep only one color, you could just take this right to whatever gig or gaff or remote control, flashlight, whatever you want to put it on, right? But we're going to start adding another color. <clears throat> this is technically, you know, this would be your first pass. So if this wasn't here on that jig, this was your first one going from we went from one to four. So this is technically, this bite went from one to four. So I'm actually gonna follow this. Now, keep in mind, because as you follow this, you are gonna follow it exactly. So whatever this piece here does, this piece will do, right? So you're gonna go under that one. And because you're not on the jig here, you can manipulate all these a little more freely. And that's why I take it off of, that's why I take it off of the jig. So we're just going to follow under that one, over this one, under this one, over that one. Okay, now here is where we need to pay attention to something. So you notice now I'm outside now. I came inside over here, 
and I'm outside here and I got to make this bend. When you choose a side, so I chose the right hand side. Actually, let me see this one. Stand by. Yeah, okay. I told myself to do the right hand side earlier, so I was just making sure that I followed along. Um, no, hang on, because I need to get to that one. All right, so you're going to do the same, but let's stay for the first pass on the second color. Let's stay to the left of your first color. Sorry about that. I hope I didn't booger anybody up. Okay. Staying to the left. All right. So we followed to the left. We went under, over, under, over. And now we have to stay inside of this loop here, inside of this bite. So we're going to hug the inside and go stay to the inside, spin the knot. Technically, we're going over right here. Okay, over, under. So you see what I did there? We're staying to the left, right? White to the left. Left, 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 left. Stay to the left on the inside. Now we've made the turn. We're still on the left. We're coming through. Now we're going over, under, over, under, right? Over here. Now, you have to remember to pull this through, okay? Because if you get too far into the knot, you're going to be bound up. So now that we, now that I've kind of shown you where we're at, I'm going to pull these tag ends about the same. And just take up this slack. But I just wanted to show you that that first bend is important because we're to the left. Here, make your bend and follow it. Under, over, under, over, under there. Now we're going to follow to the left, but now we're on the outside of the bend. And now you got your tag ends. You know, you kind of have to manage a little bit. Stay to the outside. Out here, stay to the left. We still okay? Sorry, I'm drifting a little there in the, in the screen. All right, I'm going to pull it all through here. Went around the bend, stayed to the left. Now remember, we got to stay to the left here, so some people want to then just go like that. Don't do that because now you're crossed here, okay? You technically have to hug the inside of this one. So hug the inside and then keep following, all right? And then this will be the last pass I'll show you here. So hug the inside, stay to the left, okay? And now you can start to see we're coming alive here. Now we got two colors. So you'll keep on keeping on, right? All good there? We got everybody with us? It's good. All right, cool. Now, that, as you continue through this, we're going to be left with this. Bingo. Okay. How nice that is, right? So, what we're going to do now is we're going to pull, I'm just going to reuse this same piece of white cord here. Um, <laughs> All right. So, we followed around the left the whole way. All we got to do, and this is, remember earlier when I said what you would need for this, uh, patience was in there. So, yeah, again, it's not hard. You just got to stay with me uh, and hope that I say thread a few more times so that you can keep drinking. Um, so now there was the white to the left of our first color in the teal. All we're going to do is now make sure we just follow to the right. 
and we just walk this cord through all of these pieces. You can see then we get then we get the fit out, right? That'll help us. Old fit. Old fit. So now there's your three color. Go around the outside of the bend here. Sorry. Outside of the bend, right? Because we're staying to the right. Kind of move this around a little. And honestly, when you're starting to like go to this third color, what are you laughing about now? I'll show you in a minute. Oh, sweet. When you get to this third color, this butt cord is, it, it kind of has a little bit of, um, the knot is coming together. So as the knot comes together, it's a little easier to work with. It's not, it's not as delicate. It's not, it doesn't want to tangle or collapse on you or anything like that, as it might when you're just first getting it. Now, of course, you're going to have to fight with your tag ends a little bit. So you're just going to have to deal with that, right? So keep your tag ends out of the way. And now here we are. We're following the, the teal. Follow it on the inside to right here. I can just feel everybody's bated breath. Just. <laughs> Lots of patience. That's it. And you can get crossed up in a second. But the good news is you just back it off. You know? And you've already got your groundwork, so all you're doing is just following the thread neck. Everybody drink. Following the cord. Following the cord next to it. That's the, uh, yep, they just put it up there. That's the comment I was laughing at earlier. Edward says, uh, in, in I guess a couple words or less. He's been taking a shot when Chris says thread, um, and then I can't really make out the rest of that. <laughs> but I think he's doing okay, though. Yeah. It seems cool. fine. He's, you know what? I'm not losing viewers yet, so. <laughs> We're even tangled. We're even tangled on the, this cord. We got cords <laughs> everywhere. All right. So that was a few passes there, everybody. Think, I think we're coming, coming along quite well, all right? And by the magic of Facebook Live technology. Here Pull we go. that out of the oven and there we go. <laughs> That's it. Ooh, it's hot, hot, hot coming out the oven. All right, so there it is. Another bad knot joke. So that's it. Okay, you've got tag ends over here. These have been cut. Just because I, you know, had a little bit more tag in than I really needed to work with. This doesn't need to be, let me back this out a little. So there's to scale. These don't need to be real long here. And of course the ends are burned nicely. One thing that I would recommend doing before you start tightening this knot. Um, and it's not a must, but when I was messing around with this, if you have a ton of tag on here, tie it in a knot or take and tape these, tape them flat, but out here. And if you tape it nice and firm, it will keep everything pretty stiff you know, stiff like a board. See how this, this cord is a little bit, you know, tighter, stiffer than maybe like a paracord or depending on what you're using. This, this has a little more memory, I guess, to it. So it, it wants to stay a little bit better because when you start tightening this knot, you're actually going to use your thread burnishing tool, your FID, any, uh, you know, whatever you've got you're going to be lifting all three of, let's say, this one and tightening that way. Now, granted, that would be the wrong direction because I would be pulling the tag in, but you are going to be working around the knot by tightening like this 
and working through the whole knot, okay? So as you tell, you cannot just grab all these tag ends and start snatching on this thing. Um, you can get it started, but really, I come opposite of the tag ends and start working it in because technically you're gonna work the slack toward the tag ends and then pull them tight and then come back in the knot. And you're gonna start closing all of these gaps. And it's gonna get it's gonna get pretty darn snug. You can you can snug this bad boy down pretty tight. Yeah, that's one of the cool things about the, the Turk set that I really did mention earlier in our history lesson. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was, it is a, it's a, it's a self-locking knot in a sense, right? Yeah. You know, this, this isn't something that you, uh, you know, like a overhand knot, you know, really, but this, it, it locks upon itself the more you tighten it, or tighten it? Yeah. Tighten it. Sure. Yeah. Tighten it. Um, but, and, and, you know, it will... There is a little bit, this, this butt cord is not elastic, but there is texture to it where as you snug it down and as you tighten it, it will, it will lock to itself. It, it does have a, you know, and, and paracord can kind of be the same way, where as you start snugging it and you pull it and it wants to release it, like release that little bit of tension out of it, it starts to lock down and compress and compress and compress and compress like that. Yep. So, cool. Yeah. Um, we got a couple of questions about that specifically. Yes. So, um, yeah, we're so, going to get to that. Okay. So, Tim, you know, I'll just go ahead and read this one off. So, once you're done, <clears> slide <throat> it over your gaff or rod, uh, or gaff rod, whatever, yes. or what do you do to tighten it and secure your tags? Yes. So, we are going to. You need this guy. Yeah. Yeah, grab that guy there. Now, I am not going to walk you through the tightening process because this is yet. Another one of those uh, patient, patience-filled activity, I guess you would say. So you would take it and go over whatever gaff blank or, or whatnot that you have. And as I mentioned before, I start in the knot. And you're going to start with the fid and you're going to work it around. Make sure you're grabbing all three, right? Now we're creating loops in this and I'm just chasing, I'm just chasing this around the knot because what's gonna happen is, is you will get to the end, which is your tags, okay? I don't really have, and, and you know, maybe in the future as I become better at this uh, or more advanced, you know, maybe there's some mathematic, you know, okay, you always start between six and two, or you always start between one and eight or something. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I'm not going to act like that, you know, I know the exact answer to that question. Um, but I have found that as you walk through the knot, this is the, you know, this is your slack that you're going to get. And you're just going to, as you build this knot, you just have to work all of the slack out of it. Okay? Just like that. Now, when you get to a tag, which, of course, I probably picked, like, the absolute farthest <laughs> piece. Because I told you I wasn't going to do this, but then it made me mad. Um, Somebody needs to start yelling thread. Um, but as you work through here, oh, I missed it by one. I can see it. I'm trying to stay on the screen, too. Yep, somebody called you out and said, shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Either that or we, need to, we can open that jar of... Uh, Permagloss over there and really get <laughs> really I get think the, the show room. would be over pretty quick. Yeah, really get the room lit up here. I do not recommend trying that at home. Yeah, I'll throw the disclaimer in there, please. Yeah, right. I'm sure they have it somewhere. So anyway. So yeah, this could definitely be a little time consuming and. Yeah, but it's not hard though. Yeah. You know that was the that was the whole point of this deal was. 
We're not looking at something that, you know, oh, you got to be a rod builder for 20 years to, to accomplish. Um, so you're just going through the process of, oh, my goodness. Um, all right, so there was, there was the first pass of tightening. So it got a little bit tighter, right? Obviously, it's not locked, but you saw how to do that. You can tell it's, it's coming down a little bit, right? So, on the, in terms of finishing this, here's your tags, right? These should be so snug, and this should be locked down. Let me, let me lock this. Let me pull this down a little bit so you can get a better picture. This will be... Get these kind of manipulated here. This will be locked here to the point where when you cut these, you will cut them super close and tight, and you will take and burn that edge, and it will just it'll just mold into itself. Okay, because he did a really good job on this. Looks like there's one right there. Yeah, there's a couple little spots you can yeah. see where they're burned. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, there's one yeah. there. Yeah, no, I will. I'm just looking. He's trying to find it first. Yeah. All right. You can see there's one right here. Trying to get that the shiny spot to hit it. Okay. So as you walk through that and snug it down, you can see here it is here under there. It's really really tough to see. So there's your tags, okay? So, and then it'll be nice and snug down. And that'll be one of those things that, you know, I would probably manipulate this knot <clears throat> to be these tags to be on the underside of something, right? Just like we do with so many other tags, okay? So that's that. Cool. There was a lot of questions on I was gonna say, on tag ends. Sure. So you know, basically, like you said, you want to cut those as close as possible after you got everything super tight. And it needs to be as tight as you can get it. Cut them as close as you can, sharp razor blade, for sure. And then burn those ends a little bit. Yeah. And then you know, after that, it should be, you know, fairly um, hidden. Yeah. And then if it's not, you can probably take your burnishing tool, take a th uh, thread pick. Uh huh. Uh, and you can kind of probably poke that tag in and try to hide it a little bit better. For sure. And and one one thing I will say is um like Hunter said, you could pull on this and get it as far as you can locked and then take your fid or your thread pick or something and lift this, cut it, you know, and then try to roll it and manipulate it. There is a little bit of cutting and moving and kind of manipulating um, to get the finished, you know, not to be as clean as possible. The good news is if you are manipulating this around with a thread burnishing tool or something like that, you're not going to accidentally move this piece when you meant to move that piece and the whole thing's going to go boing, you know. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, I think we've had that happen. If you're like trying to snug up a trim band or something, yep. and you pull that little out piece, and the next thing you know, Pop. and then that's when they start flying. So, um, yeah, this will be tight to a point where you're going to need almost two fids to manipulate it, get it cut, kind of tack it in, and do that. And we do have a couple recommendations on what to do after that. Yes. As far as uh, epoxy goes? Yeah, so <clears throat> a couple things. We have a few options depending on what you're putting this on, how much force is going to be applied to this knot, um, different things like that. If you have something that has a taper in it, I would get it locked above the taper, and then you can actually add a little bit of pro paste. And when I mean a little bit, I'm talking like if you're going to scrape it on there, 
Like, don't leave any ridges. Like, almost take it and take Pro Paste and wipe it with a paper towel just so that it looks like there's something on there. Like, almost like, oh, what is that on the rod blank? Not a big gooey, because when this slides down, if this is fairly tight, you're just going to turn it into a squeegee and it's going to be a mess. So you don't want to do that. You want it to be just ever so slightly a little bit of pro paste on there. Then slide it down and if you have to do a couple little final tucks, cut it, stack it, make sure you're final and then leave it. Okay. Now if you're dealing with something that maybe does not have a taper in it, lock it down all the way. We can also use, and where did the Pro Glue go? The Pro Glue, here we can actually get off of the document here. So, what we can actually also do is, you have seen us use this in repair. Pro Glue, okay? This is a glue that maintains a little more flexibility than, let's say, a Pro Paste. A Pro Paste is, will dry pretty rigid. I mean, it, it's not going to be like concrete most of the time, but it's going to be about as rigid as you can get. This is a little softer. Mm -hmm. I would say mix this. It's going to be a 50-50 mix. You're going to get out your 5cc syringe and your needles, right? Your little, your little tips here. These tips screw on. Okay. So you'll take your syringe, you'll take your tip. Screw that in. And then we're ready to go in between all these knots. You want to go back to this? You can actually come in. And now granted, these gaps are a little wider than I would say they would be. They would, these would be locked like this here, this spot. This is locked tight with no gaps. This would be a place where you could slide the syringe under and add just a little bit. Don't go crazy because you don't want it shooting out everywhere. But add a little here, add a little there, add a little tiny bit here, add, you know, just kind of tack it around and it will, that will also keep it in place. Okay? Um, there are times where I have heard that depending on what type of cord that you use, if you're using it on a gaff and you're going to be dealing with um, fish slime, I would say, you're going to be dealing with really the elements, you know, some of these cords, depending on which one you use, are porous in turn. They're not necessarily going to rot if you have a UV resistant, but they can absorb some smell. You can get a little fish funk in there. Now, there's nothing wrong with that you know, in terms of, you know, a little bit of good luck, a little bit of seasoning, but you can if you don't want it to do that and you want to protect the color integrity a little bit, you can actually come in with the Flex Coat um, Thread Sealer Color Preserver. This is the one that has the acrylic polymer in it. So this can actually soak into it. I haven't really noticed that there's going to be an issue of it getting wet and washing out after it's cured. Um, I would maybe test this and give it, give it a whirl if this is something that you think would work for your application. We have also, I have not done it, but I have also been told that something like a spar varnish works as well. That's something that the rope kind of soaks in, it seals it. But because you're not adding something like a fully coated rod finish, it's not going to be hard. Think of it as like you're adding cork sealer to cork, right? It doesn't, mm -hmm. when, you, when you put cork sealer on the cork, it doesn't feel like that there's epoxy finish on it, but it has a little bit of a something kind of a feel. It's more, it's protected than just bare cork. Like yep. it's, it's almost feels exactly the same way because you know, this just has a little bit more of, it just feels like that the cord is pulled super tight is really what it feels like. This one is not pulled all that tight, 
but that one has a coating on it to help keep it because it is a gaff. And that's just, you know, a lot of the times the gaffs, you know, that's that's a battle stick there. So oh, yeah. you might you might get some stuff on there. Hopefully, hopefully you get some. Yeah, no know. doubt. Hopefully it's not just on a rod rack, you know, in the house showing off. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those are a couple ideas in terms of, you know, what you can do to protect it or lock it. Now, this cord in here that's in between these two knots, I personally prefer you would put a pro paste down here. Now again, this is going to be the absolute thinnest possible coating of pro paste between these two knots that you could do. So the thinnest possible coat, I personally, if I was going to start and stop this, I would take and tape the cord down so I'm locking it or tie it in a knot that you will eventually cut off. Okay? Get it locked, get the pro paste down, get it spun super tight, get it locked, let it cure, trim it, then come back with your finish knots because these Turks heads are going to overlap a little bit. And when they overlap a little bit, you can add some epoxy underneath there because you've got a little bit of a gap in between the two. But the way the Turks head will tighten down, it's going to it's going to turn into like a little bit of a winding check where it's, you know, it's sloped there and it won't look like that there's a step. So Cool cool. All right. Well, yeah. <clears throat> Well, I know we right. have uh, tons of questions to get into. We still have a giveaway as well, but yes. let's answer some questions first. So Are I think we... it's time. Are we ready? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Phil, what do you think? Rapid fire Q&A. Are you going to run it? Yeah. I'll go back Rapid to the beginning. I think there's some more going on here, but I'll call them off. And, uh, All right. <clears throat> go first, Mr. Thread. What do you think? Oh, let's see, let's see, hey, let's you're driving see. this thing. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Wow, lots from the beginning. Let me let me go through here. Oh, we got a ba, late ba. start, I see. Is there any certain tension to maintain while you're working? Um, assuming this is probably with a jig. So I like the the I almost did it. I like the cord. <clears throat> to be tight enough so that it won't back itself off the bites or create a problem. But I like it loose enough that when I go to get underneath it with the fid that I can just, I can just go right underneath it, right? So there's enough there. There's enough tension that it's not going to unwind, but I can easily just lift up the threads. Mm. Chords. Chords. Chop. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. We've actually answered a lot of these. Uh, That's good. Put you on the spot here from uh -oh. John. Uh, okay. What's the max number of passes, colors that can be done? Passes slash colors <clears throat> that can be done. Um, I don't know in terms, I don't know if there is a limit. What will eventually happen is you're going to run out of gaps. Right, so you're gonna fill it in basically. You're gonna fill it in. So eventually, if you don't have a large enough diameter jig, I don't I don't know what the measurement on this is. I don't know what the outer diameter on this is. We'll we'll call it two inches or an inch and a half. The larger outer diameter, you've got more room to work with. So you could certainly make more passes. You know, the the more room you have, but you know, you can see with this one, this was like just a one pass tightening. That's three colors. I didn't have to do a whole lot to close those gaps. I mean, I could probably have forced maybe two more colors. You know, like I've got the white here. I maybe could have forced one on either side of the white and got five in there. But it's going to be, yeah. it's going to be tight. Right. It just and that's just the limitations of how big of a diameter you want to work yeah. with. Yeah. So it seems like with the jig that we sell, uh, three three colors probably going to be your max. Maybe yeah. four. Yeah, I think you could do four. Pretty four. squeeze four. Pretty yeah. easy. You know, you just have to be sure that 
you know, I would always work from the inside out, right? You know, so your fourth one, I wouldn't try to get number four in between the second and third. I would just do it all the way to the left or all the way to the right and, and figure it out from there. So you want to lay out your colors before you set this up because otherwise you're going to be like, oh, well, now I wanted to go. Yeah in between those gotcha. two. So anyway, yes. Um, John, what is the cost of one of these kits if one chooses to purchase? So John, we don't have these in kits necessarily, uh, but like we mentioned earlier. Well, how much is the jig? The jig itself, 40 bucks, okay. I believe. 40, 50 in but that But it's range. nice. I mean, this is, yeah. Oh yeah. that's aluminum. Yeah. Anodized, alu I think it's anodized. I don't think it's powder coated. Yeah. Yeah. And then the- Laser engraved. I mean, it's, you know, it's not, this is not, this is not plastic. Yeah. It's, it's a quality quality piece of tool there. Yes. Uh, and then the, the spools of cord, uh, they're fairly inexpensive. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, to get into it, you know, a couple, you know, um, spools of cord, the tool itself, you're under 100 bucks easily. Oh, um, yeah. And those By spools, you know, they're 100, and 100, 100 feet. feet. You'll do a lot of, of Turk's head knots. Well, so that, I told you, what is five feet? So you've got 20 passes in one spool. Yep. Right? That's right, yep. hopefully. Yep. Um, Jason asks, is the butt cord nylon or poly? Will it come loose as it gets wet? This is flexible, all weather, low stretch, UV, rot, and mildew resistant. It's an all-purpose rope, 110 pound tensile. I do not see where it says at wood rope. Just says utility rope. I don't see where it says that it is nylon or poly or whatever. Made in the USA, all weather, low stretch, UV rot, mildew resistant. So it's probably going to be like, you know, that's going to be like your anchor rope is as well. I don't remember what that is though. Um, this is up your alley. Nikki, is this ideal for a fly rod? It's a tough one. You know, like, it doesn't really, it's not heavy, you know? And in reality, if you wanted it to be a trim piece up above that cork grip, probably would yeah. look pretty pretty sharp, yeah. you know? I agree. Um, and again, this is an eight bite Turk's head, okay? You can do it with three bites, with four bites, you, you know? They can be tied around your hand. We were just showing you, this is, technically called just a square eight bite Turk's head knot, which is what the road map we were giving you. Right. Like, uh, George says you can always use a thinner cord for more color passes. Yep. Um, there's also a comment about taller jig allows for more colors. So. Yes, I have seen, uh, you know, a jig like as long as a broom handle. Yeah. You just, there's a little bit more of keeping down and back passes involved, but yes. That's where, when I was telling you about the lead lengths, that could be a 50 lead. Right. It, that's how long it is from yeah. one to the other. The one that we sell um, is more or less for rod building, gap building. That diameter, I, you know, in my opinion at least. Yeah. It's made for, you know, uh, obviously surf rods, which we really haven't touched on much. Sure. You can make, you know, not necessarily, um, you know, use the knots for your handle, but you can incorporate them into a longer span of, mm -hmm. of cord that could pretty much make up your surf rod handle. Yeah. Add a plate seat on there or a different mm -hmm. reel seat and you're good to go. And that, you know, it, it works so well as a decorative trim ring, yeah. you know? So like, it's like a winding check, but it's decorative. So if you have a, some of the surf rods you've seen with the big long stretches of cork tape, you're like, well, how do I finish that off? There you go. There you go. <clears throat> um, that 13 seconds. Did we, did we cover super glue? Could, yeah. Could, could you use super glue? Kent, you, you, Kent wants to know. You probably could. We try to stay away from super glue and rod building. I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah. Period. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Yeah. Whew. All right. We do have a final giveaway. What else do we need to do? Oh, you, when do you show that one? Yeah, let me see that one. This is old school right here. This is, look at that guy. Uh, that's pretty way, cool. Way, way, way back, way back. Brooke made this. 
he, uh, he was in the building this evening. So this is not an eight byte. You can see here, this is a much smaller Turk said, okay? And then he also incorporated wraps with red and black long ways down this handle. The old, uh, what were those, palm swell seats? Mm -hmm. Yep, palm swell seat. And you can see he didn't catch any fish on it because <laughs> there's finished. no guides on it. So, um, but the handle looks cool. Brooke, you just need to finish the build, bud. After you get done with that piece of pizza, you can come build this, right? But uh, yeah, so anyway, you can do a shorter one and um, that's what it looks like. Yep, looks like um, Brooke needs to finish that rod. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> what else? That's about it. I think is everyone, that about uh, it? I think everyone wants to see this last giveaway. Nice. All right. Well, we got them for what is it? Okay. It's bef we're gonna get you out of here before eight o'clock, hopefully an hour and twenty one. Go ahead, Hunter man. All right. Turn last uh, grand prize for the night. We're gonna do two spools of butt cord, Turk's head jig, and we're gonna do a gaff kit. We're gonna throw in the gaff kit. Those are pretty sweet. All right. Grand prize for the night. Who's it gonna be? Sean Cheney. Oh, of course. There it is. Old one hole custom tackle coming through with a grand prize. All right, Uncle well, Phil, run it again. We're gonna get we're gonna include a gift card in here. Yep. Woohoo, we won. <laughs> Show's over. That, that's it. Everybody gets tomorrow off. <laughs> if Sean wins it this time. All right. There we go. Kyle Watson out of Facebook. Congrats, Kyle. Great prize there. Awesome. Don't forget, it's live at mudhole.com. Live at mudhole.com. Shoot us an email. We'll get you taken care of. Hey, and by the way, the sticker wall. What happened to the sticker wall? We had, uh, we had Rachel's uh, Rod Repairs, House of Rods, Thread Art's Not a Crime. It's looking a little empty over there. You know, I got the okay to have this done, so send us some stickers. You know, it's kind of like a little bit like free advertising. Anyway, so congratulations to all the winners. Um, pretty good show tonight. I know, I know that it was very specific. Uh, we appreciate everybody participating, asking questions. I know that this is not something that we do on a regular basis. I'm, not a, I'm not a big uh, Turk's Head Knot guy, but it is kind of cool. You know, if, if you want to incorporate it in a build, get some colors going, you know, I mean, that's, Maybe you've got a rod that you need to do a color for college football, pro ball, yeah. what, you know, whatever. Um, it's always a fun way to do it. It looks kind of neat, and people are like, whoa, damn, how'd you do that? Yeah. So There was even some people that chimed in. I, mentioned, I meant to mention this earlier. Uh, nets, handle of nets. Oh, yeah, it's a great sure. idea. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple other ones I forgot to mention. But, yeah, think outside the box on this one. It's not just for surf rods or gaffs. Yeah. It's for nets. It's for paddles it's for yeah. there's all kinds of stuff now you know you can do it too. i would venture to say too i haven't done it and i don't know if i've got quite the patience for it but i bet you could use um i don't think i'd do that but are you looking for some thread i, I was looking for some braid like like the pro wrap cards of braid Ooh. i don't think we have any I think we have they know what we're talking about though you know, the, the spools of braid, like the metallic braid, comes on the card. What is it, 65 yards or 10 yards, depending on? Um, don't worry. I'm not going to show it on the show tonight. <laughs> but that might be kind of a cool thing to do. Um, anyway, so maybe keep that in mind. Uh, photo contest, congratulations to the top three. Um, this is the braid I was telling you about. So this here. PWBL. This is 1 16th braid. Pro wrap. Spool of braid. You're going to chase me around. All right. I don't know. Maybe try that. It's flat. You can probably snug it down. You might only need one pass for that. Um, anyway, photo contest. Congratulations <clears throat> for those that are part of the Mudhole Live Rod Builders Workshop. Go over there and vote. Show those people a little bit of love. They did a lot of hard work on that metallic rod build. And of course, you get to choose who wins what uh, gift card. 
Um, what else? Oh, next show topic. We got a little, little graphic for that. It's going to be called Return of the Fly. So there you have it there. And we're going to show you guys how to do set up a fly rod, but we're going to kind of key in on custom handle, reel seat, fighting butt, no fighting butt. Um, you know, because in, in theory, when you go to start wrapping guides, it's, it's the same. But we're going to show you how to get it into that handle. So that's it. Um, I think that is about it. So uh, I know we had Hoffman there helping with us. Steve was in the building, was in the war room. Of course, we had Birdman. Uh, speak of the devil, there's Birdman right there. He's given up on the questions, so he's in the studio with us. Um, of course, of course, we had the cool man, Matt. Two T's in here on the Zoom cam. Uncle Phil on the ones and twos. Uh, my left-hand man, Hunter McCamey. I am Chris Adams, and you know it's coming. Stand by for the Mullah Minute to close it out. We'll see you guys in a few weeks. Take care. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the Mullet Minute with Jake Hutchison. I am Jake Hutchison. It's been another great month in and outside of Mudhole. So we did some fishing, some rod building, and made a lot of media magic. We'll start off in the Mudhole Rod Builders Facebook group, where I'll let you decide, is this lazy or pure genius? Chris Snyder constructed a wood panel contraption where he put a piece of wood on a hinge that goes over his foot pedal on his rod building lathe. So wherever he is on his bench, he never has to get up and move the foot pedal. I'll let y'all decide, lazy or pure genius. Let's stay in the Rod Builders group for a minute, where Jake Vent asked if anybody turns down custom wood handles on their lathes. Customs by Marco unknowingly answered this question when just days after posted this video of him making wood handles for fishing rods on his Instagram. You can do almost anything you want in rod building. Sometimes you just have to get creative. Let's kick it to the Mudhole Education Center where last weekend, 16 rod builders from across the country traveled to Mudhole to participate in a surf rod building class. One guy flew from Idaho, one drove from Delaware, and one from Virginia. We also had three people come to the class straight from TikTok. I told you TikTok was a real job, mom and dad. I'm only kidding. My parents are incredibly loving and supportive parents. I actually went to this class where I attempted to essentially live tweet the whole thing. I would record, edit, and post a video of the class as soon as I could. Now this worked for the first day, but as the weekend went on, it got tough. But all that matters is all the videos are out now. Check them out on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram, Mudhole Tackle. Here's a small clip from the class to tide you over. Now they're marking their blanks. They all have a guide spacing chart that relates to the specific blank they have. However, everyone did a different length of reel seat to butt. So they'll take that basic guide spacing chart and then put a reel on their rod, deflect the rod over there, and then move their guides to get the best guide spacing for their blank and for their handle setup. Three weeks ago, Mudhole received one of our biggest shipments ever, with some of the most popular blanks from MHX, including the Mag Bass, Spin Jig, Surf, Musky, Spinning, Elite X, and Elite Pro blanks. Also, some of the most popular CRB blanks, like the Color Series, Gator Glass, and more. Then the week after that, we got a large shipment of Fuji Guides in, where almost all the guides are in stock, but you better hurry, because this is a few days after filming, and they might be gone. If you thought it was a big month already, just wait. Because this week, Mudhole announced that we are officially the exclusive distributor for cash and rod blanks. The same blanks that the pros and Fat Cat Newton alike fish. 
boom, goes a dynamite. Hot kick. Now this isn't rod building or even mud hole related, but it's something we have to talk about. Hunter Brogman from Judsonia, Arkansas, won a Toyota series on Truman Lake last week. Now, that's a huge accomplishment on its own, but coming from someone who doesn't have legs from the knees down or most of the fingers on their hands, it's even more special and dang near impossible. I say that to say this, most of us take this life for granted and what we're given by God every day. This man does not and makes no excuses when a lot of us do, including myself. He takes what he's given, works his butt off, and he's chasing his dream and excelling at his dream every day. Hunter, you are killing it and an inspiration to every single one of us in the fishing community. Our man Alex Tway or Tway was an avid connoisseur of the Mudhole TikTok Lives on there almost every Friday. And recently he came to see us. His family took a trip to Disney. He woke up next to her bed and told her he was sick. He said he got food poisoning. She went off to the parks and he slid over to Mudhole like any man would, like a good man would. So we helped him out, picked him out all the best components, and made a fake account for him with a bill that said flowers.com, so his wife had no clue. And right when he got home, he was off to the races, building and posting to the Mudhole Rod Builders Facebook group, where he is now an active member, posting and answering questions all the time. On his first rod he built, which he posted to the Rod Builders group, he wrapped a guide with all black wraps, cut that off, and put inlay wraps on each side of them. And then he did a cross wrap on his first rod. His first rod looked way better than my first rod. I can't wait to see his 100th rod. Heck, I can't wait to see his 10th rod at the speed he's going. And for those reasons, I have to nominate Alex T-Way or Tway for the Mullet Minute Rod Builder of the Month. Congratulations. Rod Builder of the Month. You know what time it is. And now, after I caught y'all by surprise with the Mullet Minute Rod Builder of the Month, I'm just gonna key y'all in on what's happening. So it's getting dark here, and Phil behind the camera says we got to go. So now, what you've all been waiting for, the Mullet Minute TikTok of the month. Drum roll, please. Take it right back to last month's Mullet Minute. Tarpon fishing on the beach with Phil and Ryan. Jake, act more serious. I'm trying to film for a cool video, not a... Let's make a hoo-ha laugh you do. He's on! He's on! <laughs> Look, if there's tarpon around me busting on glass windows, I'm gonna smile. You can't fault me for that. Whoa, Phil just caught a fish. Come here, Phil. Hey, it's the evening bite. We gotta get going. Phil says we gotta get going. Bite's on. Show them this fish. And the light is going down. So, this has been the Mullet Minute with Jake Hutchison. I am Jake Hutchison. <laughs>